What's up everyone? Lance Hedrick here again with more espresso tidbits. So last week we talked about how we can kind of uh, dial in our coffees using knowledge from coffee bags or from the coffee itself or from the roaster. And then using that, we're gonna pair it with variables of extraction in order to get to our target espresso, the coffee that we love to taste, the coffee that's like, mm, mm, mm. it's like coating your tongue like a blanket, you're tucking in your taste buds, you're saying goodnight to them and they're so they're so happy they drift off to a beautiful sleeping dreamland and this is going on way too long so I'm going to continue on but what we're going to do today I'm going to throw even more variables at you today we're going to talk about the different styles of espresso or essentially the different styles of drinks you can make strictly from a puck in an espresso machine all right and so we're going to get launched into that right the frick now So the different types of espresso we're going to be discussing today are the three kind of OGs. So what is referred to as Ristretto, Normale, and Lungo. And we're going to look at the Allonge, which um, I've read some places that it's just French for Lungo. And then I've, but in modern coffee, there has been actually a different interpretation of what Allonge is. We'll go over that, and we'll go over what are called coffee shots or spro overs or um, cafe crema. There are different names for that as well. And then finally, we'll talk about the turbo shot which I've already done a full massive video on if you're interested in that, but this is just kind of an overview of all these different styles of espresso. So we're gonna get right into them. We're not gonna to be too exhaustive today, just kind of tell you the parameters and what they're made for. First up, we have the ristretto. Now the ristretto shot is a very old school shot. This is essentially where you're doing a one-to-one -one extraction ratio, meaning one gram of coffee to one gram of espresso yield. Now what this is gonna give you is a pretty sour but incredibly pungent shot of espresso. Espresso. So the darker the roast, the more or the less sour it's going to be perceived because you've kind of, you know, burned a lot of that out of it. But you're going to have a really, really thick, highly concentrated shot. You could have up to 12, 13, 14 TDS, meaning about 14% of that beverage is in fact coffee. It's very pungent, it's a little sour, and all you're doing here is you're dialing in essentially your normal shot and then you're kind of cutting it off early, or you can go even finer and you can do a 30 second shot that only allows one to one to come out. Now there are obviously built in issues here. In order to achieve a kind of proper ristretto, you have to, you have to dial in really finely ground coffee. So you're gonna increase the potentials of channels and you're gonna get a lot of the particulates through the basket into your final cup, but that's really gonna add a lot to your text. There's going to be a lot of bitterness because uh, a kind of a higher concentration will be those fines and particulates that make it through cell wall fragments, etc. But it's going to be incredibly syrupy, really thick, and very, very coating. So Ristretto is kind of the first style of shot that you might have run into or heard of. I tend to only pull Ristrettos if I'm doing something uh, milk-based. So a cappuccino is really nice with a Ristretto because the coffee punches through a lot more easily through that coffee, a cortado, or something else like that. Anyway, that is the Ristretto. Next up, we'll look at just the normale. So essentially, this is just a typical shot of espresso. You have a one in, roughly two out, maybe up to three out. So one gram of coffee to two or three grams of espresso yield, somewhere around there. Now this typically takes around 30 seconds on a traditional nine bar machine, but you can kind of do it however you want. So these normales, they tend to taste the most balanced whenever you're considering a nine bar machine. So classically nine bar machines, which kind of started in 1961 with the Fahima, what you have is a ramp up with the pump pushing at a fixed pump pressure, pushing water through the pump until it raises up to nine bar and that's where it peaks. And the pump keeps working and pushing water through your puck to maintain nine bar. Of course, if you don't have enough puck integrity, it's gonna drop, the pressure will drop because you can't have pressure without resistance. So as the resistance is failing, you could have a dropping pressure, but I'm digressing. I have a video about espresso and pressure I linked right here. Anyway, with a normale, you're essentially dialing in to around 25, 30 seconds with a one to two ratio. Now, let me say, as I did in my previous video, that this is kind of part two of, 
You don't have to pay attention to time. Don't worry about time. You also don't really need to pay attention to ratio, but these are kind of the traditional concepts. But with a traditional shot, a normale, you could do 35 or 40 seconds, you could do 20 seconds. It's all good. But normale is roughly a one to two or a one to three style shot. Next up, we have the Lungo. Now, the Lungo has gone through a lot of iterations in recent years, but originally, it was essentially you've dialed in your normale and you just pull about double the amount out. So around a one to three, one to four, maybe even a one to like four and a half shot. So that means if you have 20 grams in your basket, you're pulling out around 60, 70, maybe even 80 grams of espresso. And so it's gonna take a little bit longer and it's gonna, it's gonna the flow rate's gonna be kind of weird, but you just gotta kind of embrace it. The Lungo is essentially um, in between an espresso, a traditional espresso and something like a filter coffee according to Maxwell Colin of Dashwood. I'll, I'll, I'll link one of his videos down below. He's a huge proponent of Lungos, but he kind of takes a different approach. He coarsens the grind up and tries to do a little short shorter shot uh, as far as time goes. So about uh, less contact time, uh, essentially you want coarser grounds because with coarser grounds, you have less of those fragments that are gonna get through and obfuscate your palate. So if you go a little coarser, you have less of that. If you go coarser also, you'll have a more even drawdown. So you have a more even water column going through the puck, meaning there's gonna be less potential channels the coarser you go. So he's doing shorter time shots with around the same ratio. So 15 in, maybe 60 out, all right? And so it's a really great way to uh, kind of straddle the gap between a really strong, bitter traditional espresso and a really weak uh, a filter coffee. You have this idea of a really aromatic, lesser body, but a lot more approachable shot. So Maxwell is a huge proponent of them. And again, this is just a new way people have been dialing in Lungos is this uh, coarser grounds, doing a little shorter time, but doing the big robust ratio. And they're really tasty. I really recommend you. All of these, by the way, you can try on at home on your nine bar machine. It's going to work fine. Of course, I would prefer a lo lower bars for some of these, but there's no need to do that. Whatever machine you have at home, you can play with these just with your base pump. Next up, we have what's referred to as the Allonge. Now, this really rose to prominence with Scott Rayo up at Cafe Myriad in Montreal, where he was, uh, that was a very common drink people were ordering, was an Allonge, and he did not like the taste of them. So he figured out a way to really make it taste a lot better. And so now you have, over the years, it's kind of evolved into what's referred to as the Rayo Allonge. And what this is, is it's around a one to five ratio at a 4.5 five milliliter per second flat flow rate. Now this is where I think, um, I think it tastes really good there, but of course you can't really control that on a home machine. So all you need to really worry about when you're at home is getting a one to five ratio pulled in around 30 to maybe 40 seconds. So with whatever you have going on on your machine, and maybe even down to 25 seconds, depending on how light or dark the coffee is. And of course, refer to the previous video to see how that would change things. But I digress again. I'm full of digressions today. Jeez, Louise, all right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so with the Alange, what we're doing is going coarser, we're going really fast extraction, and we're doing a massive output about, so 20 in your basket, 100 grams out in your cup. So that is a quite sizable shot of espresso, okay? And it averages a really high extraction yield because again, as I've said many times, yield is one of the number one things to increase your extraction. So you're gonna be hitting 24-ish percent extraction, which is really, really nice. Some coffees taste great with it, really fruity. Uh, some taste really bad with it, really bitter and watery. So you'll just have to kind of play around and see what you're enjoying. Um, and I would also recommend with something like a Lungo, something like an Alange, I really recommend you lowering your temperature almost as low as it goes. Uh, especially the bigger the yield gets. Let's go ahead and move on to the big boy, this, what's called now the Sprover, what Matt Perger in the World Championship uh, referred to as a coffee shot, what uh, people in Switzerland in the 80s referred to as Cafe Crema. We have the big yield tasty boy, okay? This is the filter coffee from an espresso machine. Now I've done videos on this already and so I'll link my Sprover video here, which is kind of a more modern, uh, attempt at it and then uh, this right here is coffee shots, which is what you can do at home. Essentially all this is, is you're grinding really coarsely ground coffee. You're putting it in your machine. Uh, you can tamp hard, tamp light, it doesn't really matter. 
throw it in your machine, and the idea is you want to dial it in to where you get around a one to 10 ratio in about 45 seconds. So you throw in, and of course the time, you know, don't be dogmatic about it. The 40 seconds, a minute and a half, it is what it is. Uh, but on a typical nine bar pump machine, 45 is what I believe Matt Perger did on the world stage, um, and it does a really great job. But you're, if you do 18 grams in the basket, 180 grams out. And of course you can go higher, you can go lower, do, what, do it to taste, all right? Try to find that perfect zone for you. This is kind of a guideline, right? And again, I would recommend checking out my coffee shop video that I linked earlier, but you're essentially getting these massive, massive shots and they are ugly. They will squirt, they will spurt, they will spray, they will wear protective goggles essentially if you're looking at it because you might get a channel right in the eye, which is not a bad thing. We have been so brainwashed into thinking that all shots should look like these really dark, drippy, sippy, honey-like, blip, 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 that's what it sounds like in my head. Uh, but that's not really the case if you have really lightly roasted coffee or if you have an older coffee that you let rest a long time or you're just doing a long pre-infusion and off-gassing it you're not gonna have a pretty extraction. So if you see areas that are, you know, kind of funky, uneven, you don't need to immediately go, oh no, channel, my channel radar is going off. You can chill out. It's fine if you see a video and it's not perfectly even. In fact, the more even it is, likely, the darker the coffee is because you have a higher viscosity. So when you're drinking a medium, a medium dark, a dark roasted coffee, the viscosity of the espresso is a lot higher. And so it covers a lot of sin, all right? When you have that viscosity, it's coating it, it's harder for channels to break through, especially if they're near the center, like at a, the quarter size in the center. So lighter coffee, there's less CO2 escaping, there's less crema, there's less surfactants, there's less everything, so everything is seen. So anyway, don't be worried about a little, uh, little um, squirts le left and right. Uh, use a spouted portafilter if you don't want it to clean up because there will be a cleanup to be made. Anyway, that's kind of the Sprover. The Sprover, actually, the Sprover variation, as I show in my video, is lowering your flow rate. So technically, you can't really do a Sprover uh, without a machine where you can control your flow rate, but that's okay. You can do this. You can do a coffee shot on a nine bar machine, and that's what I showed in the in the video uh, that we just showed. It was with a nine bar, uh, eight, eight milliliter a second flow rate style of shot. Now, lastly, we're gonna talk about the turbo shots. Link to my video here. Turbo shots are essentially a sub 20 second shot where uh, you're kind of maxing out your pressure at about six bar and it's, it's a really quick coarsely ground shot. It's essentially a short allonge or an allonge is a, a long turbo. And so the idea here, based off that paper that I linked above, the, the video on the paper, is you have a more even extraction, you have more consistency, you have less wasted shots. It's less body, higher clarity, and a lot of sweetness. Um, and so these are really quick, really easy to dial in. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I can't change the pressure on my machine. No worries, baristas at coffee shops have been doing something similar for years. Um, where essentially you're just doing a, a, a coarsely ground shot. If, the, if you do it coarse enough, the pressure can't raise to nine bar. And so what's gonna happen is it'll raise as high as it can and then it'll just cascade down until you stop the shot. And so whenever breezes have been dialing in these shots for years and years and years for decades, they have been finding that these like really fast gushers that they would try as a joke actually taste pretty good. And so for years, this has been kind of practiced in coffee shops, but it's never really been served because it's not proper to serve it. And then recently in online forums, People have, I guess, kind of rediscovered this or discovered it independently of coffee shops, and they call it um, yeet, a yeet shot. Um, but th this is this is not new. It's been it's been practiced for years and years and years, um, which is essentially just a turbo shot without the exact standards laid out in the paper uh, about turbo shots. So you can make one at home, you can do coarse ground, you can do sub 20 seconds, and just try to let it reach maybe eight, seven or eight bar at the peak, and then it's just gonna kind of cascade down as it's pelting water onto your puck. It tastes really good, super high clarity, very little body, and it is ugly as homemade sin. But these are all fun things to try. I highly recommend you take this video, you try all the different styles of espresso. Not only will you understand what you like, maybe you'll start to understand, well, for this style of coffee, I like the Alange. For this style of coffee, I, I like a traditional shot. For this coffee, you know, I could, I, could, I could bang on a coffee shot. You know, you never know. So, uh, and then it's also gonna just help you on dialing in. The more styles of shots you can dial in, the more you kind of know where you should go on your grinder, the better and the more quick you're going to be at dialing in coffees that are new to you, that are experimental processes, different types of varieties, different, different species. Right, we're getting more and more species that people are discovering and making good, like the eugenoides that's been on the world stage. It's not a new species, it's the parent of Arabica. Robusta and eugenoides fell in love and they made uh, Arabica, right? And so anyway, 
I keep slapping the table. I'm making points. I'm like, Dwight, ha ah, ha, ah, on The Office. And The Office fans tell me the blow. Anyway, that is the video. All the different styles of espresso. There's obviously more we could dive into, but I think that is good for today. So go brew some, taste it, slurp it, stir it, drink it, you know, do the daddy hoff. Dial in a coffee shot, dial in a Lange, dial in a Spro over, a Turbo Shot, a Normale, a Ristretto, a Lungo, whatever you want to do. Dial those in, taste them side by side, get hella caffeinated, and then debate with your friends which one's the best. Or don't, it's up to you, I don't really care. But you know, I'm just glad that we were able to spend this time together. And I would like to ask you while I have you, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, like the video, share the video, party with the video, uh, drink coffee with the video, whatever is awesome for me. I'm excited to interact with you down below. Let me know which one of these is your favorite or if you have any type of preference, like if you like Lungos with a certain style of coffee. Let me know below, let's engage, let's talk about these. And I hope you brew something tasty today. Cheers.